All right, so like I said, these two systems, these two coral flats and this tank, they're part of a larger system. This entire system from the sump all the way to the mangrove tank is all one system. And the Deltec Twin Tech calcium reactor is the prime, primary uh, mineral that replenishment. One. Yeah, one wow. calcium reactor is handling 600 gallons. That's insane. Um, see, our, see our quantum's overflowing a little bit. Um, but just to overview before we um, kind of spotlight, is these tanks really embodied what I was trying to do here at the studio. So we've got a two foot tank, a three foot tank, and a four foot tank. So we can experiment with a lot of different uh, equipment. Yeah, it's gotta be great for lighting too, right? And of course we have the mangrove here at the end, but we'll start here on the, on the sump. Why, I mean, so I was here Monday and your tanks are a lot more clear. Is yeah. that in my head, or did you did you scrape some glass, or what's the no, story? We, we know we cleaned some glass, but I just got the uh, Deltec VF eight thousand right here. Um, so this is this was able to just drop in and replace the VF six thousand. Oh, I didn't even realize that's a because you had the uh, original Deltec in there on Monday, so yeah. I didn't even notice the swap out. Okay. Yeah, it dropped in just fine. You can see it spooling up a really nice, uh, very dirty um, filter roll. Um, and so each tank has its own protein skimmer, so they could they could function uh, separately. So you could, got, you could section them off. Yeah, because valves. that's how they started. Yeah. Right. So this one has the ultra reef with a calc reactor. This one has the uh, the cove uh, I two hundred, I think, with its own calc reactor. And then this one has the quantum, which uh, but not its own calcium reactor. But all this water is connected, and I've got a common continuous siphon drain for all of these to keep everything super clean, super, super quiet, super quiet. So, so what, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I know we're not trying to dive too much in gear, but what's the difference between this one? I mean, why do, what is, is it just the fresh roll that I'm noticing such clarity or is there the previous special one I was it? actually um, advancing manually? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like fully working, but this one has all the, the newest upgrades. So all of the tank, the display tank water yeah. goes through here but all of the coral flats just kind of goes in raw gotcha. and mixes up. Um, but yeah, the first tank is, um, these, are, these three are innovative marine um, Nouveau EXT. So they all have an external overflow box kind of bolted to the back of them. And so, you know, this is almost a cube. It's, um, it's 40 gallons, but it, when you take the inner dimensions, it's probably closer to 30 gallons. But I love that you've got like a two foot, a three foot, and a four foot for, especially when you're, when you're tinkering with lights and new lights coming out. And you, you know, that those are such common spreads that people have to solve for. Yep. So I think that's really cool. So this is the, uh, the two foot LPS tank with my actual Acanthastria collection. So we've got <laughs> Rotunda Flora here. This is um, a, te a very nice Acan Echinata. The solid orange one is a Favia Formis. And then the orange lobos are actually Acanthastria pachycepta. The green one is also. So those things will sting and eat anything nearby. That's how you know that it's not a lobo. And um, the one in the middle right there, bro, I bought that off of eBay as an orange goalie about 12 years ago. It was a single circular polyp. And I put it right next to my scolies, my Australian scolies, and overnight it ate one of them. The first goalie <laughs> ever got was eaten by my orange goalie, which turned out to be um, Acanthastria pachycepta. Um, we've got some of the uh, Coniastria palauensis over here. And then these are what I call the Tonga mooses. So this is a weird, kind of like an analog to uh, Homophilia bowerbanki from Australia, but these are actually really, really different. Also, I mean, I know it's, the focus on this tank is the Acans, but your Alveopora, that thing is just gorgeous, that pink peach coloration. Yeah, so this tank um, is the lowest light and the bluest light. We've got a Swiss Guard candy, a Swiss Guard basslet in there, a candy basslet, like a five or six year old uh, Plectranthius that's been in there forever, yellow tang, trimagobi. I think that's it. I think that's it for I'm, now. I'm amazed that you, yeah, that your, your Swiss Guard and your candy get along. I, I didn't think that was possible. Yeah, they have no problem, but the pink alveopora is an incredible example of why I enjoy having so many different tanks, because I have bounced pieces of that around all over the place. 
This is the only tank where it's like really pink and just like really dark uh, polyp stalks and just gives it that really, really pronounced um, yeah. uh, uh, flower-like appearance. That is amazing, yeah. Yeah, um, very little rock in here. There's a Nero 3 in the back. Everything's hidden, right? And so some of the corals you see on the back, some of them are glued onto the back. And in some of them, these two right here, these larger ones, they're actually on a CHA HP Voyager uh, pump mount because uh, we can move them around, right? As they get a little bit bigger, I can move them around and tilt them a little bit. So those two are actually glued to the magnet mount for a CHA pump. I think the, the other takeaway for me when I saw these finally in person was um, being a sand bed guy, a sub, well, not sand bed, I, I, don't, I don't wanna put it that way, but I, I like a little substrate. Um, and I have kept bare bottom tanks in my past, but these tanks, I, I completely forgot that there's no sand looking at them. Like yeah. in person, they just, they look grown in, they look mature, they look like a reef. Obviously the coralline has covered a lot of the bottom. It just, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of my Christmas Favia, because you know for a long time he just looked like whatever, and it wasn't until I got the nutrients up that the red and green came back, not just around the growing edge, but through the entire colony. Like I remember when that coral was on Obtanium. Like I remember yeah. when that was a dream coral. Tyree had a piece on Reef Farmers, you know, that was uh, weight listed and everything, and um, I just still think that's one of the most beautiful corals there is. And the rotunda flora, man, just like that, that weird gray-brown base color with bright orange mouths. Like if people really paid attention to the acans, they would uh, appreciate the diversity within the actual group of acanthastrias. Right. I, for me, I, you know, I had the, the flip to that, the war coral, where you have the red on the outside and the green in the mm -hmm. center. And that was the coral that just, yes, there you go. <laughs> the I, war I, coral. That's the thing about being here is there's so many corals that your brain just ignores certain ones because it's too much information. But that was the coral that was really curious to me because it went totally red, no more green. And then I noticed that my uh, UV had burnt out. Yeah. Um, and I regret that I, because I actually just got rid of it um, because it just wasn't attractive anymore. But now I'm, I, I wish I still had a piece to see if it would have come back. You know? Yeah. One thing I'll say about corals that are stagnating, like sometimes it's not necessarily the coral. It's not like it's a trashy coral. Yeah. You just have to really dial it in. Find and, the spot. And that coral yeah. was fine. He was whatever for a long time until I got the nutrients up. We've got a single um, XR15 Gen 5 Pro, not blue, but it's running mostly blue because this tank just doesn't need a, that much light. Yeah. But uh, again, all the rock is, is, is fully open. And then we come to a tank that is definitely a lot more populated. This is the Euphelia, actual Euphelia garden. Um, you know, a few disc corals in the front. Which on Monday, I mistook that coral in the back, right, for a Euphelia. But now that I see the sweeper tentacles, uh, now I see it. Yeah, yeah so um, a few years ago, it was uh, shown that uh, uh, Euphelia and Galaxias are closely related. Yeah. And so far, I have not seen any um, real aggression be with the torch corals. We already know that torch corals are like the most, uh, you know, beefy of the Euphelias. Yep. So I've kind of uh, separated the, the, the Galaxias with Euphelia, thinking that they could take the sting more than others. Um, but yeah, a huge range of Euphelias in here. The only one I'm missing is Cristata. But um, we've got the uh, kind of orangish uh, dragon soul. We've got the classic um, Australian gold torch. Um, this is an Indonesian kind of gold, I call it gold striped, because yeah. it, it, the, the yellow is really just on one side of the tentacle. Um, uh, one Ancora, these are mostly my frog spawn. So there's like a regular frog spawn. There's a branching frog spawn. And then uh, like this one is in between. So I think this might have some hammer in it, right? They'd call that a framer, but this one's like, 80% frog spawn oh, yeah. and uh, you know a couple shades of so like this is a you know good hammer coral but what is that yeah. and I, I bought this as a round tip hammer this was a this was sold as a round tip hammer it's so weird because like you know that it's not a torch right but if you described it someone it would be a torch and that one right there too right this guy kind of like this bumble bulbous yeah. tentacle tips like, you know that's not a torch, but if you described it to someone, they would say, oh, that's a torch. Same thing with this one, right? Kind of, there, it might be a totally just unrecognized species, or there just might be so much hybridizing within them that it's just not recognized. And then 
in the, the two back corners is my 20 year old strain of what used to be like the most awesome branching green hammer coral, which you've grown many times. Which I cannot get rid of. It just shows up randomly in a corner of my tank every time. Yeah, I've got um, some green torch here on, a, on its own frag rack. Makes it really easy to manage. Um, this is a torch spawn, which has actually never looked that goldish orange. It's usually more of a lime green. Um, I grew that from a sliver, bro, like a tiniest little half inch sliver that I got from AC Aquaculture. And um, about mm, three, four months ago, I cut it in half and I sent it back to Chris Meckley at ACI so he could have it back. And it doesn't look like a branching, does it? Um, it's, it's, it? it's like giant branches. Okay, right? I was going to say, because from the side, it almost looks like a wall hammer skeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's just, it's not like a typical branching like you would have with yeah. these, these yeah, guys those right are, here. Yeah. Um, but it's like, it's like really fat branches. And then we've got a couple weird hammers here. This is kind of a, a ham hammer torch uh, <laughs> frammer um, it's just there's a whole freaking spectrum of them so um, so the one thing about these this tank is I'm using the Kessel AP9X but in order to get the light bright enough on the edges I have to turn the entire light br as bright as possible so one of the things we're gonna do in the next couple of weeks is we're gonna put up a, a mounting arm here so we'll, we'll be able to have a, a lot more flexibility in where we Amazing. mount the light and then really start getting into the strip lighting. Um, this tank is flowed by two MP10s in the back right corner and back left corner. So the back wall, back bottom is completely open for water flow. And again, there's no pumps visible, which is great. It's just uh, really it's almost on. invisible, right? They're well, not, yeah, I mean, compared invisible. to most, most systems that you see, right? But yeah, having the spotlight, like it's got a lot of benefits, but as the corals grow in, there's a lot more self-shading. So when we put up that mounting arm, after we do a feature of each tank, we're gonna put, we're gonna drop down some strip lights and that's gonna give me a lot more even lighting. So, you know, the, uh, the dragon soul in the middle is getting a lot more light than the torches here on the edge. So we're gonna even that out with some, uh, by being able to mount this a little bit higher, turn it down a little bit and add some strip lights to just really fill in with the, with the lighting. Gotcha. And um, I'm sure somebody's gonna ask us in the, in the comments. These are the Metal Innovative Marine Nouveau stands. And we um, took all the panels off, kept the doors off, and then we sanded and painted them ourselves to make everything nice and white. Just keep it nice and open. You know, you'll see there's no art on the walls. The focus is the reef tank. You know, the other thing that I, I've really enjoyed seeing all these tanks is, um, Obviously you have a lot of rare stuff that I would never see in person really because I'm a bit of a hermit in the hobby. But um, it just was a reminder of a lot of things that even though I've been in the hobby for 20 years, you skip over certain, I don't want to call them rites of passage, mm -hmm. but just things that you never do, right? Uh, I never kept, um, you know, larger clown species, right? Like yep. the spot synctus. I've never, um, Shoot, now I'm drawing a blank Harley on the Tusk. Huh? Harley Tusk. Well, that's on the list, but uh, no. Uh, Yellow varieties? Um, soft coral, red skeleton. Pipe organ. Yes, I've never kept pipe organ in my life. And you're talking about how it's just growing like crazy everywhere. And I'm like, why have I never kept pipe, pipe organ, organ coral? Pipe organ is cool <laughs> until it's not. Yeah. I swear, we haven't had no problems. The only problem with pipe organ is stuff growing in the skeleton. But once the coral grows, nothing's gonna grow into it. And then, like we have uh, issues over on this tank where we have to go in and chip it out all the time. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. it just, it gets you thinking like, holy crap, I've never kept, you know, Trisinctus or any of the, I mean, I think I had a maroon clown for a short bit right in the beginning yeah. when I had no idea what I'm doing, but that doesn't count. So this is a four foot tank. It's um, uh, rated at hundred gallons, but it holds about 85 when you take the inter internal dimension. Yep. This was started initially as a soft coral tank and it was incredibly challenging to keep the soft corals growing in sync with each other. Some of them like this little gold crown here mm -hmm. and the green devil's hand just almost never grew. And others, like this large polyp guy over here, grew so huge, and a lot of leathers you saw in the coral flats came from this tank, huh. right? So I've just, this is kind of a hodgepodge reef, but you'll see there's three bombies. We've got one bomby here, one bomby there, one super bomby here, and this has been all the corals that I want to see in a display setting, but without any real motif. <laughs> and um, 
let's see, we're lighting this tank up with two Hydra, what are they up to, 64 now? Yeah. They're as high as possible, I wanna raise them higher, um, but once again, we're gonna have more flexibility once we add the bar and put it and drop in some, uh, some strip lights, because this tank, more than any other, you see a lot of self-shading. Um, this right here is mostly turban area. Um, this is a very strange kind of spining, uh, spiny reniformis. I got a reef stock a bunch of years ago. Um, it's grown incredibly well, but I got a ton of reniformis. I'm is sorry. This, a, this is reniformis as well, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Probably that's also a reniformis, um, but I have a giant hero coral yeah. here. I've got a chunk right there, kind of underneath the Acropora harida. I've got a piece from Jason Fox, which is partially grafted, and I'm sure the green is going to completely take over at some point. Yep. Um, this is Astriopora. Yeah, two peltatas. Yeah, two Duncan Opsamia peltatas. Oh, that's right. We talked about that Monday. Yeah, that yeah. Was, I had no idea that those had been reclassified. I've got another hero up there, kind of on a just like a little bit of a platform. Yeah. Reminds me of the first one I ever had. I and love then, that Samacora, by the way. Yeah, the orange branching Samacora is super cool. And right um, underneath it is the spotted Astriopora. That one's kind of a blue lavender with green polyps. Collected that in Australia. That's almost reniformis C. Renif yeah. No, almost. It's, uh, and this is another Astriopora that's semi-branching. Like some, sometimes you'll see yeah. um, uh, Astriopora, which is closely related, related to Montes and Acros. Sometimes you'll see those branching. There's some species that will do it, like that's their calling card, and others that just don't. But this guy kind of started doing it, so I'm still like, Come on, buddy. Come on, man. You can do it. You can well, do it. Well, and then you got the, the classic pink branching yeah, we've got some, uh, up there. Yeah, si branching Cyphastrius uh, decadia up there. Um, and this has started kind of becoming a little bit more of a Pasolaporid style tank. So we've got the Milka Stylo in the back, the um, Bird of Paradise bird's nest here, um, the green tip ORA, the pink ORA. Um, then there's a super thick, chunky um, Aduxi that I collected in Australia all, yeah, as well. Man. That thing will turn into just, like that's a reef builder coral. Yep. It will just go freaking nuts. Um, and then uh, something that's becoming rare is Marilina. I had to find this labeled as a Platygyra. I think I'm Blue Zoo Aquatics. And it's just like, it's a weird double sword that it's very hard to find Marilina, but since there's no appreciation for it, um, sort of just it, ends up in the trade accidentally. Like dude, I wanted it. it and it was listed at like $69.99 for two months. And then they dropped the price to like 55. So with shipping it was less than hundred bucks. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and get it. Just a nice pink coral with green mouths. This guy actually bleached out cause I put him in one of the, you know, all those corals, they start over there and then they audition and then they come over here. And as I'm thinking about it, they come cool. Like this is not a tongue coral. Right, that's not a herpolitha. No, that's, that's not a polyphilia. That center ridge. This is a uh, tenactus. This is super like robust kind of style coral. Always has that purple rim with those very toothy skeleton underneath the flesh. And then that's just valley down the center like yep, that, that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And so the cool thing about this colony is I always thought that here on Ensis Turbinaria, I always thought of it as like a medium light -like coral. But then I started keeping some of them in bright light. They freaking loved it. I mean, this was a frag. This yeah. was a tiny little, like almost throwaway thing. And I just kept it and kept it and it's just gotten bigger. And it's just very weird. Again, this is one of those corals, kind of like the snake polyps. Polyps only come out at night, right? So it's photosynthetic, but at night, this thing looks like a mini Duncan. Looks like a micro Duncan. Polyps freaking everywhere. Oh, that would be cool to see. Yeah. Very... I, I love this tank dimension wise. When, mm -hmm. when you stoke my flames a little bit on Acropora again. I was like, well, I don't want to set up another big tank. And I saw this tank and I feel like this is just a fantastic dimension to throw into some corner of your house where you can just go nuts yeah. and go to town and, you know, not have it not, you know, cause I have my main tanks up in the busy part of the house and, you know, I try to make it look nice and stuff, but I really like the dimensions of this. They did a really good job. I love the oh. shallowness of it. It's a, and I love what you did with it. You know, it's just, um, this has got to be one of my favorite, second favorite. I know which one is my favorite. <laughs> um, so we should talk about the fish a little bit. I have a, a ton of tangs in here. Yeah. We've got a yellow tang, convict tang, a Tommany flame tail, 
um, a gem tang, and then my powder blue hybrid that I've had for about two years. When I first got him, he was mostly powder blue, and as he's getting older, he's got that smoky look. He's, to him. he's starting to get a lot more purple. Yeah. And um, I actually added this copper band um, a little bit more than a week ago, and it was so funny like watching them fight because I knew the copper band was just present his dorsal spines a lot yeah and the, the powder blue really wanted a piece of it and at the end of the day he realized he couldn't he couldn't do it i love and, the damsels too by the way oh yeah yeah the springer eyes mm -hmm. i got a an eight pack of um little tiny springer eyes from and look at Quality them just Marine. bouncing into that dude they're like chromuses they're yeah, not behaving like say. they're not behaving like a damselfish at all yeah. They're just like little chromuses. They hang out together. They love living inside that giant Milka stylo. Um, I know that they'll be even more attractive as they get older, like a jet black with yeah. um, more like blue striping instead of just like that weird sapphire blue coloration. But yeah, really fun tank. You got good representation of that genus, the, the Crisiptera genus. Oh, we forgot genus. to talk about the Stark guys. I know, guys we didn't even talk tank. about the pair yeah. of Stark guys you have, but such an underappreciated genus of fish, I yeah. think. I mean, these guys had their heyday because they, you know, they were thought to eat certain parasites and stuff, but... Uh, no, they don't. Yeah. They don't. They're, they're, yeah. All right, so here's a perfect example. Here's a Bernard Pora, the reddest coral of all red coral, even redder than a uh, Lobophilia. You can see, like, the off-colored little bits. Those are flatworms. Ah. They, those guys could care less. They could I care didn't even notice that. Yeah, I they that could care less. And it, you know, I have this weird bushy um, Bali kind of deep water style acro. That guy's actually kind of pretty, but also kind of trash. <laughs> <laughs> he's just baby brown and I'm sure in the right conditions, he's got like a little bit of pink to the branches and like a little bit of yellow tip, but it's like the most subtle thing possible. Um, and then on this tank, you'll see I have two MP40s um, in each back corner and they're on, on a range of cycles. Once again, no pumps really visible in the entire I tank. Say, yeah. And uh, man, it really just keeps everything super duper clean. But yeah, I'm impressed with that because you really don't have any power heads up front and yet you have plenty of SBS in here that are just thriving. Yeah. You know, you've got the return, but then you just have a lot of flow coming from the back and colliding with each other, right? Yeah. This one is a perfect example of why I want to add the light bar and switch out the lights and add the strip lights because these corals are as they're, 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 you know, besides the Milka and the Hieronensis, um, they're mostly all medium, medium size, but you're already seeing some of the effects of some of that self shading. I also love the wall magnetic mouse in area. That's just so that. So one thing that's neat about the innovative marine nouveaux is they instead of having a glass back, it's a glass back with a, a, a small layer of acrylic to have the built-in teeth for the external overflow. Oh, wait, so that's not a magnet. You glued it to the. So acrylic? that is glued straight to the glass. Oh. I'm oh, sorry, the acrylic. Yeah. The, the back wall the has, glue has, has a sheet of acrylic, fine to that. so you can glue directly to it. Um, ah. No problem, and it won't fall off. So I'm looking forward to doing that a, a lot more in the future. The yeah, I thing, really like that tank dimension. I don't know why it just resonated with me, but uh, it's just a great little four foot shallow reef tank that you could do a lot of fun with. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's been really fun. And then moving right along is probably one of our most featured reef tanks here at the studio, which is funny because it's like the last one we've set up. <laughs> so this is, this was number two for me, but yeah, this is number one. Although we yeah. got a couple more displays yeah. to talk about. Um, I love, and this tank blew me away because again, you're a tall guy. So you stand next to it. And um, I mean, you could tell that it was a decent sized tank from the videos, but the sense of scale of seeing it in person, again, I'm six feet tall, right? So it's on an extremely tall stand, which is fantastic for having that, you know, polydarium or mm -hmm. riparium type system going, because you don't really have to hunch down too hard to really get, you know, a feel for what's going on down here, but you also still get to appreciate this. Absolutely. It's just a great execution. I love this tank. And then, I mean, you know, again, I don't know what my reach is, but, you know, that's, all Way right. up there, man. So we got the tape measure out. So this is 32 inches to here, and then we're up to 52 inches to the light. I'm growing acros on the bottom, um, 52 inches away nice. from the two Kessel A500. So that's one thing that was interesting. What he pointed out when he first came in is like, holy crap, this tank is a lot bigger. It just in real feels life. big. Yeah, like I thought it was just like a little. Uh, 
30 by 30 cube or something, you know? I mean. <laughs> well, it is a 30 by 30 cube. <laughs> I, it's got to be taller, though, right? I mean. It's 32. Okay. Yeah, 32 just, from the glass to the glass. So 31 from inside to inside. It just feels, yeah. I, I was the size of the mangroves, even. I mean, yeah, I love this tank. This is always a favorite. And I, the color, I mean, like the fish in here, like your mystery wrasse and everything else. And I love mm -hmm. your leopard wrasse. Oh, man. So this tank is still kind of in transition at the moment. Um, this is one of the tanks that's gone the longest without some real cleanup. And I left a lot of the Acros, Hydno, Montes, and Stylos in here just to really see how well they would grow once we raised the lights, which we yeah. did about a month ago. Um, but this is going to transition to like, I want two Acros and two caps, right? So that big old Langside purple rim cap you saw back there, yeah. destined for here. Um, but Evan, I want you to bring it in and show like, you know, a little buildup of red cyano that we have in some places. I don't know why, like this tank has a ton of flow. Got some aptasia in the back. Uh, this tank has a ton of flow and it yeah. still just gets a, you know, a, just a, a more than acceptable degree of cyanobacteria. And you know what, I can blast it away and it'll go away. When we do a huge cleanup of this thing, it'll be much better. But yeah, little fields of, um, of Aptasia in the back. The back wall has some uh, hair algae and some cyano on it. So I don't want anyone to ever watch Reef Builders videos and think every tank is flawless, you know? So I'll go out of my way to clean up tanks for tank features, but once in a while, like I just want to point out the super duper reality of these aquariums. Yeah, the other thing for me was uh, I was really impressed with the flow of this tank in person. It's, it's hard to see it now. Maybe I was, maybe when I was here Monday, it was a different wave crest mode or something. But I remember just your softies in here just blowing around. And it really just got me thinking about, because I know you're such a huge advocate of flow, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. Even in, in non-SBS tanks and got me kind of thinking like, ah, maybe it's time for me to throw another pump in my tank. <laughs> so this is being run by two Nero fives and they, they do an, a gyre cycle where uh -huh. it'll spin the water one direction for a little while, then it'll spin the water the other direction for a little while. And then four times a day, they will both come on for like 20, 30 minutes. That must have been what I saw. And just flush. Yeah. And <laughs> this Sarko Fighting is actually my favorite in here. That guy's got a nice gold crown with bright white polyps. And it's just, just because you're visiting, he's all like, I'm not going to open up today. Oh, did you tell him about <laughs> yeah, Monday, all, all of the Murphy's Laws that yeah. happened on Monday when I showed yeah. up? Yeah, and we got some nice, uh, like, see. So it was, what's funny is, like, I started this as a clam tank, and I was having a little bit of issues with uh, pyramidellid uh, rice nails. Mm -hmm. And so I added a leopard wrasse and the mystery wrasse. The leopard wrasse hunted for them, bro. Anytime I put a clam in there, he would look, like, really, really look. For the, for the rice snails. But now I only have the one funky Darasa that's kind of getting overgrown with the one long pile oh, of Oh, I didn't even notice him back in there. Yeah, he's just, he's just kind of hidden back in there. That's a trick. But I thought, like, even though I'm tall, because the water flow is all disrupted, you can't really see through the surface. Yeah. So this did not. It's not a look down type it, of system. I thought it would be, but it wasn't. And uh, these mangroves here are, uh, what are they, like a year, uh, two years old? And this one over here in the window, is the same age. That's from the same batch that Julian Sprung dropped off at the Reefstock after party. That would have been Reefstock 2018, but except that one's been in a more stable environment, has only had fresh water. It's in like aqua soil made for planted tanks, and he only gets fresh water and window sunlight. Yeah, that one's a little more branchy too. I yeah. Noticed. Well, he's just been stabilized yeah. well enough. And um, do you remember Deep Sea Aquatics, I believe, made a tank that was similar in dimensions with really shallow water and had like an, a waterfall off mm -hmm. the back with low yep. overflows. Yep. That was a neat tank for like clam look downs, but if I ever see one of those used for sale. So, you know, we're, we're, we're showing off a lot of the studio and a lot of the tanks, but I don't want to overlook the things that you cannot see. You don't see any wires because all the stuff is mounted to the bottom of the tank. If you want to give them a look up, make sure to open up that exposure a little bit. Everything's mounted up in there. And then same thing with these tanks, right? All the equipment just takes a back seat. It's hidden underneath the tank, kind of lodged up in there in the stand. We've got one power strip for the four footer, one power strip for the three footer, one power strip for the two footer. And I feel like it's just as important to show off what you can't see as what you can see. Yeah, I mean this. Oh, now nah, we already did that. 
Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, obviously, these are all plumbed external overflow to a sump. But um, what resonated with me with these tanks is because they do make all-in-ones, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the thing that we lack that I see a lot in the freshwater hobby is creative stand design, mm -hmm. right? And when you don't have to park a giant sump underneath, I love that you opened it up, right? It gives yep. a good sense of dimension and scale. And it's just, it, 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 I don't know if it's a, what's the word I'm looking for, but it minimizes, whoops, I'm blocking the camera. <laughs> um, distraction. It, yeah, it's a distraction to have a solid box below. And um, obviously, you've got your remote sump. But even with the all-in-ones, I'd love to see manufacturers start to open the stand up. That's an option. Yeah. These are just, these are stock stands. We yeah. just took the panels off and didn't install the doors. Yeah. Right? So that is an option for anyone who has an innovative marine That's stand. That's true, yeah. And just to let you know that I am a, a purebred aquarist. I got my freshwater tank over here. This is a 150 gallon tank that has uh, a couple of koi angel fish, uh, a few discus. It's still in limbo as far as like what I want to do with this tank. I have some aspirations for some of the other tanks. Um, it stays really warm. These guys, you know, they're, they're really nice. But one thing to show is uh, automatic filter roll on the freshwater aquarium. That's Keep something that freshwater sump. hobbyists should pick up on. Dude, That's it's gotta it be. costs less than like an FX6 fluval canister filter. Yeah, just and buy a 20 gallon long, stick one of those things yeah. on there, throw some biomedia on the base yeah. and call it a day. I, I love this is the true community tank in every sense of the word because you've got discus, obviously angels, but then you've got rainbow fish, you've got some zebra plecos, um, you've got some shellies, right? Yep, got Tanganyika one shelly. And, yeah, uh, you got the zebra plecos, like like just all over the world, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know when you've had a lot of freshwater tanks, sometimes there's a few fish that like slip through and you don't want to get rid of them. You feel yeah. bad, like the pearl gouramis. I've had those for like six years, and it just doesn't feel right to take uh, yeah. them into the fish store, you know. So I'm still trying to figure out like a long-term solution for this tank as far as what I want to do. But you know, uh, I use a let's see, a, a Vectra S1 for the return <laughs> flow, and I use a, an MP10 for actual water flow, which I'm sure no one would ever do with a discus, um, but it helps to keep the tank super super clean. No, it's a fun tank, man. Yep. I love it. When I saw the Shelleys, I was like, what? <laughs> All right, so we were just talking about the freshwater tank over here. And this is a little bit more my display uh, tank. This is actually one of Ecotech Marine's uh, glass aquariums that they built to showcase the first wireless Vortec pumps. They were not called MP40 at the time because there was no other models. They were just called Vortec pumps. And they made three of these, and I drove this back from Pennsylvania. Um, and basically has four wild and all autumn angelfish. Um, just kind of a glass tank with Crips and Barclaya that have totally taken over. Altums are my all-time favorite. I, when I was a kid, keeping aquariums stateside, um, you know, every aquarium you bought at a pet shop had maybe a depth of 12 to 18 inches, right? Yep. Everything was narrow, and then uh, we went to uh, Europe uh, to stay for the summer. My dad was working on a project, civil engineer, and I remember I went into a pet shop, and they had this super deep dimension front-to-back tank with Altums. Now, I'd never seen Altums in person before, and then the setting, I'd never seen a tank deep with an aquascape before. And I remember thinking as a kid, like, why do we have such narrow 55s, 29s? Yeah, they were all made to be super showy. Yeah. Um, they were ahead of the game on the, 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 the deep tanks, I feel like. I've had these guys since they were the size of a quarter. They're amazing. I got their wild altums. I bought. I paid. I paid 25 a piece. I got four. And you're like normally when you get like a group of freshwater fish, you expect some attrition over time. These guys, no. These are the same original four. I'm pretty sure I have two pairs. One dominant male, who kind of uh, corrals two of the females, and then one subdominant male. They're a little timid right now because the overhead lights are on and we've been doing a lot of work. But man, this thing used to be planted with uh, three giant sword plants that just mm -hmm. grew out of control. You can yeah. kind of still see where one was that's kind of coming back. But I, I, I literally, I got tired of cutting all the, you know, the old leaves. Yep. I cut the entire thing down. And now Cryptocorans and Barclayas have just propagated through the entire thing. It looks it's, like you got really some funny. flowering action happening. Yeah, the Barclaya flowers all the time. I've messed with it a lot, but it just, I don't know how they throw out babies, honestly. I don't really know. But the large-leaved uh, one in the back, this is also the Barclaya. 
Oh, wow. Um, so this is just lit with, uh, this is filter with an Eheim canister filter, which I'll show you in a minute. But it's lit with a Kessel A360X Tuna Sun with the narrow angle reflector. And, you know, when I, I, I started this down lower with the medium reflector, it looked yeah. cool. But when I raised it up and added the narrow reflector, yeah. it just started looking so much more dramatic. Throws a lot less light on the glass, so I don't have to clean it nearly as much. And um, this is a kind of a custom um, knotted pine style stand I got from Steve Herlock before he uh, went into the next realm. This was made for one of the classic uh, Oceanic 60 cubes. Oh, okay. The original cube tanks were two by two by two from Oceanic. So that's what it was made for. And if you'll come around, you'll see that um, we'll jump into this tank uh, in a little bit. But the canister filter is actually underneath the saltwater tank. That's funny. How funny is that? That's um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in upgrading this into a larger tank. I kind of want a square peninsula. And for sure, that's going to have an automatic filter roll. Yeah, I, I mean, when I saw it on your, I'll call it your community freshwater. Yep. Um, it was really just a eureka moment of why are the filter roll folks not I mean, maybe they are, I could be wrong, but why aren't they marketing more against the freshwater crowd? Because it means it's super great for a freshwater system where I feel like mechanical filtration and, and taking that load off your biofilter is, is, is much more beneficial. Now, planted tanks, okay, you know. Yeah. Especially you go wall stats, simple, you let the nutrients go crazy. That's a different story, but. So this is one of two peninsula tanks. And when I first stepped into the space here at the studio, I knew I wanted a peninsula against this pillar and a peninsula against that pillar. So this is some of like the most fleshed out tanks here at the studio. You know, I'm here all the time. And this is my flagship reef tank. So it's all Ecotech Marine gear, all Bright Wheel Aquatics additives, which I, that's what I use mostly for almost everything at the studio is Brightwell Aquatics. Okay. But I have a lot of Worldwide Coral strains. But this was really modeled kind of after the Worldwide Corals. Um, um, I don't know how to describe it, but a lot of different corals, like a super high diversity, lots of coral frags everywhere. And you, you'll see, again, um, it's sand free. There's four bombies, four large bombies. Um, we've got four Radeon XR30 Gen 4 Pros <laughs> that I want to uh, switch up to five XR15 Gen 5 Pros um, and also lower it down. But you know, I've got my custom made little thingy right here, so it makes it really easy to um, adjust the, the height of the lights. Yeah. It just keeps everything super clean. The water flow is provided by two MP60s on the end. So once again, we're sticking with the uh, kind of the hidden uh, or, or at least um, ninja pump motif. And, yeah, uh, and the flow is great. I mean, I know peninsulas are really hard to um, get good flow in, right? Yeah. Um, but it looks great. I mean, you, you know, looking at these Goni operas just flowing in the current, even on the Stylophora, you know, you can see every once in a while the, the polyps get like that little surge going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, let's see, what do we have in here? We've got a, a little grouping of Cyphastris here. Um, this is the original Meteor Shower, right? And then this would be over here, this would be more like a, a new style. So this one's really green with orange polyps. And when this one's like a little bit more teal with red polyps. And then yeah. a little bit more of the branching, branching. Cyphastria decadia. Yep. Um, this Durasa clam is not going to be in this tank too much longer. He's just too big for the tank. You know, he just fills that space and he walks around and like bumps into stuff. Um, we got a uh, little torch section, little torch coral uh, section. This is a bizarro Cyphastra here. Um, you even got a little Xenia going, man. A little red yeah, the pom -pom. Xenia is actually our Aptasia. Like we're trying to eradicate it. <laughs> but since I've really been like bumping up the nutrients lately, yeah. um, it has really exploded in growth. We've got the, you know, definitely like the, the flower part garden here. And, and there's two more flower pots on the other side, but I knew when I added these true wild uh, percula clowns um, that, that that's where they would, you know, host up, which is really, really close to uh, my desk. So I can see them really well. I, you get so used to seeing the captive bred ones that, you know, once you see just the perfection of wild types, you know, the, um, I mean, every, I, I don't know how to describe it, but just the geometrics of their mouth and their eyes 
everything and and even the the scales on them i mean like there's no it, yeah I, I don't know how to there's, describe it but there's something about a wild type mm -hmm. percula that just does the captive bred ones in in my opinion i'm glad they're not mass collected the way they used to i'm glad yeah. the captive bred thing is has really taken off but every once in a while i mean it's the same with freshwater fish right every once in a while you see a wild one and it's just a different story um so yeah, what else? So there's a lot of manicuring that needs to happen to this particular aquarium that I haven't done yet because I want to feature the reef tank before I do some trimming, right? So here we have a Joe Dirt, kind of a thin branch acro. What I'd like to do is cut off the really fast growing part yeah. and then cut down the base and then glue the, the, the good growing part back down on the base. Same thing with the uh, Worldwide Coral's yellow tip. And then the red uh, dragon also needs to be reset. It just kind of grew out of proportion. It was in there um, before a lot of other corals. And so it just kind of grew like crazy. So I want to hack that guy down and let him grow back out. But is your goal eventually just to have these staghorns um, fill that void? Or would that be a flow issue down the I road? I don't know. But I want them to be in proportion with each other, right? Yeah. I don't want this giant. So you got this you know, big. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, so again, with this guy, I want to cut off that main, uh, you know, thin branching part, cut down at the bottom, and glue him onto his own base. Um, and I see what you mean about the Xenia now from this yeah. angle. <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely did a lot of work. Uh, right in front of you, you'll see the uh, Palau Estrella, and there you can really appreciate that it's not a stylus. Right here, yeah. Yep, yep. So that's the Palau Estrella. Above it, you can see a little bit more colorful Stylophora. And then we got a green, um, the super green, I think maybe Project X, I don't remember what Jason Fox called it, Milka behind it. There's a bug out uh, behind that, a little bit more of a rainbow. And, but yeah, I just, I, I, one thing that I have avoided in this tank, and I've tried to do with every tank, is to hide all the water pumps on one end, right? But I, I do believe that in the future, I'm gonna have to route some, some cabling here mm. and put two pumps over here because you can see that be, because the flow is kind of only comes from one direction, yeah. the corals are kind of like growing with the wind per se. So we'll go ahead and feed these guys a little bit and then we can talk about the fish. Um, we've got two yellow tangs, started with five and they evicted one and then another and then another and then now we're down to two. We've got the purple tang, the flame flim tomini, we've got the gem tang and then this is a used uh, blue tang that I got and uh, for, for cheap, just a used fish at the local fish store. And then the mollies, man, those are some of the oldest original fish here at the studio. I love, because you, I, I mean, I haven't kept score, but it feels like you have mollies in every reef tank <laughs> yeah. or in every system, which they're great, right? I mean, uh, you, you turned me on to them. I have, I have uh, one in one of my coral systems and it just, it's great little algae eater. Um, yeah. I'm tempted to put them in my sump because I'm a, I do the whole refugium thing, Calerpa yep. scrubber, um, but I'm having some turf algaes outcompete the Calerpa, so I thought, well, maybe I'll throw some mollies down there and they'll chow down on I'm, the turfy stuff. I'm kind of due for a refresh of mollies, because yeah. they do have an attrition rate and they don't last forever. The males always die out first. The really? females last forever, but the males die out first, but I am feeding a lot more than I used to, so I'm sure that that is helping. Um, but yeah, so one thing you'll notice that there's their frags on the bottom. And besides like the Ghanis, they're auditioning to go up on the, the reef scape, right? Gotcha. So, so I put them on the ground, test them out. You know, the chalice, they're going to stay growing over there. Yeah. But like frags like this and this and this, they're auditioning on the bottom until they find a permanent home um, in the tank. And just to, uh, to show you what's happening in here, um, this is the dosing. So oh, we've got uh, the four pack of Versa pumps. Got a continuum, big old uh, reservoir right there. We've got uh, calcium magnesium buffer and then acro power. That's a great dosing container, by the way. It looks like something Ecotech would make, you know? <laughs> right, I picked it up because it was, um, it, it is white with blue trim, right? That's yeah. the whole motif of the entire studio. And then here is the sump. Uh, again, super duper simple. We've got yeah. the L1 for the return, a 3D printed uh, dosing line holder, uh, dedicated calc reactor, and then uh, the max spec air aqua duo. And one of my favorite things about, about this particular system is 
The water box has, has uh, doors on both sides, yeah, man. Yeah, that's great. It's just like that suicide door where if you hit it, you just have more access. You can always, <laughs> there's the buffer. <laughs> um, but yeah, in incredibly simple. So simple that right here in this chamber, I have the uh, freshwater canister filter. I'm just a little disappointed there's no red dragon red PVC plumbing anywhere, you know? Just, <laughs> just yeah, kidding. Yeah, I mean, it's not a thing on the exclusive per se, yeah. but... Um, no, yeah, it's no, the, the simplicity of it to me that I love. Yeah, the plumbing is just fine. I don't look down here that often. So did this skimmer come with a float switch? Does MaxSpec build yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, so the, the MaxSpec Air Aqua Duo comes with a float switch, which okay. should be standard with all DC-powered protein skimmer. And so when we want to clean it, we can literally just pull this out, hit, trip the float switch, and it'll just shut oh, off. Oh, it just sits in there. That's brilliant. Yeah, and and I like it's the, one uh, it's this one pull out, this cup removal thing? Yeah, it just, it just switches over. Okay. So the cup is, just has like this little latch going on. Okay. But a boom. So you don't have to deal with like uh, unscrewing or no. anything crazy like that. No, nothing crazy like that. And the, what's funny is like the filter socks are mostly for quieting. Right, they're not exactly yeah. for filtration. They're literally just to quiet things down. We usually have a little sp uh, foam sponge right here. But you know, this is one tank that I wouldn't mind having some uh, a mechanical filter roll on. Would you just use the same sump and cut that out and put yeah. it in? Yeah, yeah. Just haven't gotten around to it. It's just it's not the the highest priority. This tank yeah. stays really clean. No, it's just I love the simplicity of it all. All right, well let's check out the last tank set up here at the studio. Sorry, this. this is the first tank that was set up at the studio, but this is the last one we're featuring. So if you've made it this far, and what's probably <laughs> turning out to be a two-part series on the tour of the studio, you'll understand that me and Mark, we've been at this for a while, so we're pretty winded, but you'll understand why we don't do like a, a, an aquarium tour of the studio that yeah. often, but hopefully if you made it this far, you'll appreciate how, how this tank has, has really come along. So it, it started out as a Montipore only tank. Now, I've mentioned this on some videos, we're still battling some nudies. And so I, my solution to dealing with the nudies was just to introduce more acros. <laughs> well, and I love that you, I mean, it seems like you definitely went with uh, a predominant of um, deep water style yeah. acropora, which is yeah. really cool to see them um put together and just see the variances in them and the color differences and i really dig it um and what's the story on these lights uh, i've never seen out. these before um so again this is this whole tank kind of fills in my my peninsula vision of having uh -huh. the peninsula tanks next to the poles to kind of create a semi-room divider yeah and um you know you can still see so much through it but it's full of coral um, but these are the Acro Optics LED light. These are made in Boulder. This is almost like a micro brew LED light. I don't think they've made more than a few hundred fixtures ever. Is that XLR? Um, what is that? that no, this is, that's like... a fancy power connector cable. Okay, it I was might, trying to figure that out. It might be an XLR for a power connection, but it's like, it's the best of both worlds. Instead yeah. of having a diffuser plate, it's literally just a field of LEDs yeah. and two fixtures. They're about 2,000 each, but it just fills this tank. And as much as the corals grow in, there's still a plenty of light happening between them. And one of the coolest things is the built-in touchscreen. So just go to settings, go to pre preview, and then I can quickly Ooh, just yeah, you know, access the five different channels. Um, it's really fun. It also has wireless programming. So that's yeah. I see know, the wireless uh, antenna. So that's on. not taken away, but it's just super nice. I can I can tweak the lighting on this tank faster than pulling out my phone and firing up any single app. Gotcha. Yeah. So this to me is like one of the most uncompromising lights. Tons of cooling, tons of fans, lots of different colors. There's five channels, but I think there's like 12 different LED colors in it. Yeah, it's like a rainbow up there. Yeah. You know, looking yeah, it looks in, super I mean, like fun. you got the yellows, you got some magenta. It's just, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a trip to see it in person like this and see all Yeah, the and this is a... And it blends well, though, I mean, looking into the tank. Yeah, this is, um, this is, was large, Red Sea's largest peninsula-style aquarium. And you'll see that there's like 60 pounds of rock in here. 
And yeah. the rock is used specifically just to hold up the coral. There's no explicit filtration stuff. But Evan, if you come around here and show off your beautiful, ginormous Capitata colony, I'm just going to put my hands up in here. And you can see just how big that guy's become. Really, really awesome coral. There's actually, this is a giant piece of lace rock. That's lace rock. Really? And this is pipe organ. And we've got some anacros. I mean, then like half of these rocks are lace rock also. I just always been So not a, even like BRS dry, no, Marco style. No, this is just Idaho desert lace rock. That what the cyclic guys love. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the same pink alveopora that we saw in the lower lit reef, reef aquarium. I can see what you mean now. Under these intense lights, you know, it's, it's less colorful, but then when you put them in that lower light setting, more blue dominant, yeah. they're, they're that peachy, nice color. And um, over and here, your, your blue squaw mosa, by the way, is just yeah, stellar. that guy's been growing since he was just like a little dude. Um, he's gonna, he owns this tank. Like yeah. whatever happens, he's as he boss. gets bigger, the corals are gonna have to get out of his way. <laughs> yep. and, and, and this is what's really interesting is um, when you have a bunch of tanks certain zones naturally become the, the nursery for different things. Right. So this is a Acropora suharsinoi that I had for a long time and it just, it settled in very well. And I started putting other deep waters around it. I, I, I really want to push like the naked uh, spectrum because sometimes you'll find a deep water acro at 15 feet yeah. growing under a table acro. Yeah. Right, so the whole deep water thing is not super informative. Um, but yeah, this is the, so the deep water acro nursery. This guy's gorgeous. I love the contrast of the mm -hmm. polyps against mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So this is probably granulosa, not classic granulosa. Don't know what that is. I collected that in Australia. I collected that in Australia. This is actually a highlight adapted speciosa, the, uh, the green guy back here. Um, and there's some frags of it in more appropriate lighting over here. And you can see that it grows like a lot more open. Yeah. And uh, we'll take a look under the hood real quick. And it's just, it's kind of like every other tank. Just simple. real open and simple. We got a calc reactor, uh, protein skimmer, mechanical filtration, mostly to quiet things down. And that Reefer 900, man, that thing just totally cranks. That's an yeah, awesome value. It's a big value. skimmer, yeah. It's, and I love that it's got the wiper built in. Oh yeah, the wiper with the window on the cup is like really freaking awesome. And I was worried about their deep water, uh, when I talk about like a deep sump, their behavior, mm -hmm. but this is, the, I mean, you're, what I'm looking at is probably what, nine inches of water? Yep. And it's performing great, so that, that Well, eases. you would expect Red Sea to make a skimmer that drops that works into in their Red own sea sump. sump. Yeah. yeah, that's true, that's fair. And then one of the newest uh, upgrades to this tank is... Um, this is the, like the Red Sea system. You got the, Yeah, that, I mean, uh, the it's the skimmer, idea. The There's doser. a few companies that are fleshing out their own ecosystems. Yep. And this one is all Red Sea, except for the lights, because these are microbrewed lights. Like, like, they're really different. But we have the Red Sea Reef Wave, Red Sea Reef Skim, or Skimmer, Reefer Skimmer is what they call it now, uh, the Red Sea Reef Dose, and then the Red Sea Tank. This is a, and we use Red Sea additives on this particular tank, plus Acropower. I like it. Yeah. How do you like the dosing pump so far? You know, I think it's still kind of new yeah. for me to give a really um, detailed uh, feedback on it. Of course it works, but I have high expectations of a, of a doser that was like three years in the making or more. And uh, I'm sure it's going to do the job. I think it's going to be way more interesting when I add uh, four more channels mm -hmm. and see how the programming reflects um, all the trace elements, gotcha. right? So I've never done oh, balling with there. like eight freaking channels of yeah. dosing. Because um, they have that whole Red Sea program with all yes. the trace elements yes. and stuff. I was also, I mean, I, again, I haven't had firsthand experience, but their app looked well executed, which I thought was a big plus. Um, the, the app looks good for, for dosing. It's got a lot of feedback, but yeah. their, the whole Reef Care, Red Sea Reef Care program is all the trace elements are dosed in proportion to how much calcium you dose. Right. And, but I also have a calc reactor, which is already providing a lot of calcium. So we'll have to see how that works. I see what you're saying, because yeah. you, at that point, you really can't base your trace element additions based on how much red sea calcium you're dosing since you're already supplementing yeah. with something more. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I want to thank everybody for making it this far. 
And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is you've seen a lot of tanks that are already set up, but there's some profound philosoph philosophical reasons why this tank isn't going yet. And as an aquarist, as a hobbyist in any hobby, it's really easy when you have an extra tank to go ahead and set it up. But I've really focused on tapping the brakes to make sure all these tanks were really rocking before setting this tank up. Yeah, I mean, I, I was when I saw the video where you guys were lifting it onto the stand, and I was pretty excited about the sheer scale size of it, you know. Um, and if this was the only reef tank that you had, I would be asking you, like, what's the story on it? But obviously being here, but even just watching the videos, you have so many systems. I mean, it's, it's a different story. It's a different equation. And you, you're mastering it there so that you have, I think, a, you have a good idea of what you want to do here, yeah. right? You so. know, after 25 years of reefing, before I set up the studio, I would have told you that, yeah, for sure, I knew almost everything. But, but setting up nine, 10 more tanks and going through the motions for every single one, for different applications, for different corals and different lights and different purposes, I have relearned everything I used to know, right? And I'm actually kind of glad I took that, that extra time because I want this to be a flawless aquarium, right? right? So yes, it's been more than a year since I drilled the closed loop and installed everything, but I have relearned some principles with these other tanks that are gonna transcribe onto this tank. And I'm more confident and I have a more precise idea of what I wanna do with this tank since I've been doing these tanks for almost three years. You know, one great example is like I did some videos on uh, running the ketomorpha reactor, mm -hmm. and now I'm having to chase nitrates up. <laughs> I'm chasing nitrates up. And so I thought when I wanted to design a sump for this thing that I would want a built-in ketomorpha chamber, and now that yeah. I'm chasing nitrates, don't need that. Forget about it. Don't yep. need that. Um, but this tank has not been stagnant, right? Like the, the, the ideas and the principles I want to apply to this tanks have been crystallizing based on all these other tanks. And the corals for this tank have been growing the whole time. Well, that's the other thing, too, is um, how many friends have we had that they've set up a three, 400-gallon tank, and they fill it up with a bunch of frags. And then there's always that realization of, oh, man, it's going to take a long time before this looks like a reef tank, right? Mm -hmm. You have colonies now that you can fill this with yep. and really make it look nice from day one the and still have room to grow. The goal with this tank? is to have the fewest number of corals of any tank that here. That speaks to me, man. I love right? that. <laughs> the largest tank is going to have like 30 corals, maybe. Yeah. Like there's more than that in every other tank. But the, the idea here is, especially with the staghorns, I kind of want to put a little emphasis on the staghorns because I have so many over there. And I just I want to have tiny little bombies just barely covering up the closed loops and just growing to the top, growing to the top. That, that's really the plan. Um, the only thing, the, the two things, like lighting is going to be kind of straightforward when it's, when it's ready. Yeah. But the only two things that are holding me back uh, from having water in it right now is just like converging on a sump design that I want and creating a, some basic aquascapes to hug the closed loop adductors. Well, it, your comment about less corals but larger corals, I mean, we talked about that on reef therapy. That, that was my goal with my 180. To do it at this scale is, is pretty cool. Um, and I mean, the sheer amount of flow that you have, but you have it built in a way that you can hide it. Yeah. Again, sort of that common theme that you've had in those innovative marine tanks. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch this thing develop. And the way you did the closed loop down there is pretty cool, I thought. Yeah. Um, you don't have the pump sitting on the bottom. You have, because at that size PVC, that's so rigid, right? Yeah. That the, the, the pump can sort of be suspended and supported by the piping itself. Because that's, you know, what is that? One inch and, and a half? half? Yeah, yep, okay. Inch and a half. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm, I'm so thankful for whoever's watched it this <laughs> yeah, far. We're up. probably at the end of two hours. I think we're gonna split this up in two parts. I think people are used to when we get together, it's gonna be long format, right? So yeah, um, yeah not gonna, uh, do anything different there. We're going to do it the long route. So. Just, just thorough. Yeah. And and that was fast. 
Yeah. That was fast. We could have talked about an hour of, on each tank, but we just wanted to give you guys a full on tour. We're just cracking at 90,000 subscribers. We really want to put like a, a, a lot of energy to push towards 100,000 subscribers. So if you know anyone who is interested in reef tanks, please share some of this content with them. Help us have like an explosive sprint from 90 to 100,000. Um, I want to set this tank up, but there's a lot of other projects I want to do, but I have prioritized that no other projects will happen until this tank is flowing. That's good, yeah. This tank is flowing. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video. Um, you came here Monday and you looked at everything. I did. And then today we've uh, analytically discussed everything. What, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts? What are your words about I, this place? I mean, I think I've overused the word in, in, this, in these videos, but scale, right? You get a better sense of scale because like I said, you're a big guy. And a tall guy, I mean, I mean, I guess I'm not short, but you know, um, seeing some of these tanks in person, you know, it definitely had that wow factor. Um, the other thing to me that, two things, one I already said was, uh, you really hit home some things that aren't really rare corals or rare cool things. They're just things that I've never ventured into and tried as a hobbyist. Um, large yep. clowns, pipe organ. Yellow parietes. Yellow parietes, uh, Blue Ridge coral. Yeah. I kept it. Just, I mean, I kept the skeleton in a fish only when I was a kid, right? Um, and then the other piece of it is that, uh, to your point about mastering it for this tank, seeing the same coral in different tanks and seeing how vastly different they were that I didn't even recognize that it was the same coral. Um, part of that's probably just my amateur nature of not having being a good coral taxonomist at times, but. Um, the alveopora being a good example, um, but even some of the SPS, it's just, I can see what you mean in terms of, you've created these microcosms where things are slightly different, the environment mm -hmm. variables are different, and these corals react differently, which is expected, but a lot of us with only one or two tanks at home, we don't get to witness that. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool for me. It's kind of fun having the same coral in different tanks, because I yeah. know how it should look, so if it's off by a little bit, I know that there's something happening in that tank. Yeah, and yeah. I would say the noise factor, the loudest thing in here is your air conditioner. It's not the it's tanks. summertime. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if that thing was off, it'd be quiet in here. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, it's been awesome to be here. Um, I've, I've had a blast. And even though we spent pretty much a whole day on Monday hanging out and talking about stuff, even just being back here today, I still saw 20 things that I missed or overlooked. And it's weird how your brain will do that, where you'll look at a reef tank, and there's so many corals in there that you, would, you scan past things. And then the yeah. second take, you're like, oh, I didn't notice that yeah. guy there. And yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm really grateful to spend the time with you here to catch up since it's been so long. Yeah, it's, um, it's been a minute. You know, This really wouldn't be possible without the sponsors of Reef Builders and the channel. A uh, huge shout out to Worldwide Corals, Brightwell Aquatics, Ecotech Marine, and Two Little Fishies. Um, you know, they help me not play the game, not give you clickbait, not give you link bait, not give you sensationalized stuff, but just like real down home uh, reef aquarium topics. And that part would not be available um, without their support. So if you talk to anybody at Worldwide, Ecotech, Two Little Fishies, or Brightwell, let them know um, how much you enjoy the content. So Mark. Thanks so much for coming Thanks, by. Man. Thanks for having me. We've been doing this for hours now. We're gonna go grab yeah. some lunch. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this journey. Make sure to subscribe, share this content everywhere you go. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Later guys. See you guys.